Hi everybody, it's a bright warm spring day here in New York City and I'm in my office and I want to share three things that I do when I'm out selling um, what I call a consultative sell. So I think there are three things that I need to do or I need to make sure get done. It's really not me doing it necessarily, I'll explain in a minute. But um, I think these three things need to happen for an effective selling conversation or a selling meeting to have happened. Number one, I think the first priority for me as a seller is to help my buyer name a problem or name several problems, what we call pain points. A lot of people will tell you that. And I think that adds value. Um, but a lot of salespeople stop there. They name pain points, they get pain points, and they think they've got enough and leave. And I've done that. And um, I often ask myself, why don't people buy after I've got their pain points? And I know what their pain points are. Not only that, I have a great solution within the budget and still they haven't bought. And I think the reason for that is that they haven't not only seen the pain points clearly, but they haven't connected to the pain points and that's number two. So one, I think it's important to make sure that buyers name pain points or that um, problems get named and helping them get clear on that I think is this first step where I'm adding value. Second step is helping them connect and that's just a fancy term that I use but what I like to do is help my prospect get clear on what is the impact of the problem what's the depth of the problem, potentially what is the cost in real terms, like dollars and cents, and what is the cost in terms of productivity, not so tangible. R regardless, it's a matter of connecting to the problem, that's what I call it. And I use a technique that's not mine, I've heard this used by many salespeople and it's called active listening. And active listening is once a problem has been named, I can then spend time working with the person with the problem, the buyer, in understanding what the impact is through active listening. And these are questions like, um, tell me more. That's usually the first question, tell me more. So I'm allowing the other person and I'm listening, uh, I'm allowing the other person to um, explain what is the problem, what's the impact of the problem. And I'll start asking some other active listening questions like, what have you done? What's worked? What's not worked? And usually after about a minute or so of having this active listening dialogue, I'll ask uh, kind of like the last question, which is, would you mind me asking, well, how, how does imp this impact you on a personal level? Like, what is the impact to you? And what I'm looking for here is for the person to share a little more personally, more intimately, perhaps, um, what the cost to that individual would be such that I'm now being viewed more as a trusted partner to help alleviate a problem that's impacting this person. They may say something like, um, well, I may have to pay overtime to get this problem concerned, or I may have unhappy employees, or on the extreme side, they may say something like, um, I might not get a promotion, I might get fired. And so it's important I'm taking notes as they're telling me this, that I'm really understanding what is the impact and more importantly their understanding what is the impact and thus they're connecting to the problem. And then the third thing, and this is really fundamental and very important, is that the buyer, the prospect, the person who's going to hire us, views our solution, my solution, as an investment, not as a cost. Um, cost is a very disempowering conversation and I think when I go down that path, it gets me into trouble because people will ask me things like, oh, we're a sales training company. And they'll say things like, what is your price for your training? What is your per student cost? What is the material cost, 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 cost? They're depleting a budget, that's how I view it. And so in that conversation, the perception is that they're giving something away, they're giving something up, they're having to lose part of a budget. The other type of conversation I much prefer is that it's an investment. And the conversation will um, usually be initiated by me. I'll say something like, um, or I'll ask a question, do you have a sense of how you might measure your return on investment? Can we do that together? Because I find a lot of the time 
Some people are very clear on how they would measure return on investment. They may say something like, well, I want this training program to impact profits. I want this training program to impact uh, revenue. And that's kind of obvious. Um, but I think sometimes I can help identify metrics because revenue is something I do hear often as uh, a metric uh, return on investment. And while I don't want to discount that, I also want to make someone aware that measuring revenue as a result of our effort is sometimes very difficult because clients come and go, you can get a big deal or you can lose a client and it could have nothing to do with our program. It could be a circumstance, it could be luck of the draw. More importantly, I like to be able to nominate some metrics that I think we can impact and there's two that I usually lead with and the first is increase in number of opportunities and the second is increase in conversion of those opportunities because I think our program directly impacts those. And so the three things again in review are one, have problems get named, two, make sure that the person with the problem connects to the problem and understands the impact to them and their organization, and three, that before I leave, the person buying clearly understands that they're willing to make an investment as opposed to pay a price, which is a different perspective on, on hiring us. In other words, being able to get clear on what the return on investment or ROI would be. So I hope that helps and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care.